In this next part, we're looking to find the relationship. And so we are told the student hypothesizes that V is proportional to N. So that means V equals KN. Algebraically, if we solve for K, that means K is V over N. And K is a constant. So that means the ratio of V to N should remain constant. And so we need to show that it's incorrect. So the way we could do this, it says uses points two and four, but we should always use as many points as we possibly can. So I'm going to go back to the data and look at that and pull the data points, pull the data off and calculate the, that ratio. So we have K equals V over N. So we have N and V and V over N. So N we have starting at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <clears throat> and the V for 1 is 0 0.18, for 2 is 0 0.24, for 3 is 0 0.27, four is 0 0.34 and for five is 0 0.39. When we calculate those values, what we get is 0 0.18, 0 0.12, 0 0.09, 0 0.085, and 0 0.08. Now, the ratio should be constant if it's directly proportional. But we can see it's not. And in fact, it doesn't just randomly vary, it decreases. V over N decreases with increasing N. So now we are looking to explain, to disprove that, show that it's incorrect. And so we would start out with our premise, a direct relationship a direct relationship means V equals KN and K, the constant, equals V over N. Therefore, the ratio of V to N should remain constant. However, it doesn't remain constant decreasing from 0 0.18 to 0 0.8. Therefore, V is not proportional to N. So notice, I just want to break down the way we structured this here. We started out with the premise that this is what a direct relationship is. Here's what we'd expect to see. Here is what we find. And here is our conclusion. So we have the premise. We have, and the premise, what should follow from the premise, what we observe, and the actual concluding statement. Now, in this next question, we have another student who says that V is proportional to the square root of N. So that's K times the square root of N. And if we look at the graph, we can see what they did is they, kept, they have N and V squared. So what they did is they squared this. So V squared is K squared times N. Similarly, then, K squared is V squared over N.
and k is a constant, so a constant squared is constant, so v squared over n. So if this is true, then a graph of v squared equals k squared n should be a straight line that passes through the origin. Because a direct relationship, so here's a linear relationship, y equals mx plus b. <clears throat> a direct relationship is in the form y equals mx, which means it passes through the origin. And it has a constant slope. So it's a straight line that passes through the origin. And it, in fact, that's what it looks like it does. Now, we don't have error bars on this, but it does look like um, that's what's going on. So we go to the next question. Explain how the graph, how the graph verifies this hypothesis. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> what's our train of thought? We have if v is proportional to the square root of n, then v squared is k squared n. k, a constant, when squared, is another constant. And if v squared equals k squared n and y equals mx, then an x-axis of n and a y-axis of v squared, <clears throat> we find that v squared equals k squared n is in the form of a straight line that passes through the origin. v squared equals k squared n is in the form of a straight line that passes through the origin. The data, when transformed, and graphed v squared versus n produces a best fit line, a best fit straight line that passes through the origin. Therefore, V is proportional to the square root of n. And if we trace out our logic here, um, we've got our premises, our basic physics, um, our argument here about what we'd expect to see, um, and that is a form of a straight line that passes through the origin. And then we've got our observation the data, when transformed to graph v squared versus n, produces a best fit straight line that passes through the origin. Therefore, v is, is proportional to the square root of n. So <clears throat> this is how we would go about answering this question. It's very important to note that we're asked to use the graph to verify this hypothesis. Because there's another way we could verify this hypothesis. And that is, we could go back and transform the data. And the data, which, which they transformed, we could do it without graphing. We said that v squared equals kn, and so k then is v squared over n, k prime. v squared equals k squared n, and we'll let k squared equals k prime. And so then we could add a couple, couple columns to this table. And those couple columns could be v squared. And we have v squared, the v squared. Oh, and then we could have v squared over n. And the v squared over n works out to be zero. 
0 0.03, 0 0.029, 0 0.024, 0 0.029, 0 0.032. So the question is, is V squared over N constant? Relatively so. And if we format this down to one significant digit, we get 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0 0.02, 0 0.03, and 0 0.03. Now, if you notice, there is a little bit of a trend here. So it looks like it does go down to a minimum of 2.4 and then come back up to 0.32. Um, but the bottom line is, in this case, what we're saying is that ratio is constant. And so therefore, therefore, the relationship will hold. Now, if we look at the graph a little more closely, if we're very, very, very meticulous about the graph on the third page of V squared versus N, if you notice, this point is a little bit above, this point is on, this one's below, this one's a little bit below, this one's a little bit above, this is more above. And so it looks like what's happening is we've, we've got a phenomenon where the data is really doing this. It's like a quadratic is being fit to a straight line. But that being said, we did not plant put uncertain error bars on this. You know, those error bars might be this large. In fact, if the, if the uncertainty in V is 6.3%, then the uncertainty and V squared is going to be 12%, 12.6%. And so if we take, for example, this uh, 18, 10% would be 1.8 or about 2% or 1.8, 10% uh, of 1.8 is going to be about 0.2. And so 0.2, excuse me, 0.02, It's going to put us at about here. So we're looking at error bars about that large. And you can see even with error bars that large, plus or minus 0 0.02, and of course those are going to get smaller. The straight line will pass through those error bars and the origin. But it's something worthy to note, you know, for our, our learning purposes here, that we're looking for a pattern in how those points fit the data. So for our statistics purposes, it fits. Um, but for our, uh, like the, the pure way we would prove something, it doesn't fit. But given the uncertainty and the error bars, it's a perfectly reasonable interpretation. And for any, any, any cases you would look at in this range, where you are interpolating this range, that equation in that relationship will work just fine. We would only run into problems if we were to extrapolate outside that range, would we run into problems. So for interpolating, it's a very reasonable thing. But that being said now, if we went about this and showed this data and this table and calculations and used that to argue our case, we wouldn't get any credit because the question is asking for the graph to give us those answers. And so that is question A12.